Hello, I'm Alex Corman with Technology Finance Partners. Today I'd like to demonstrate some best practices in building a return on investment calculator, something that can be used either by sales organizations to demonstrate financial value to their customers, or by companies to evaluate their own investment opportunities. In this case, I'm going to walk through a calculator that a salesperson or business consultant might use to help estimate the value of their product to customers and to clear the path to a successful sale, the kind of thing we help our clients do every day. So let's take a look. This is a calculator that a fictional company, Global Software, might use in a sales engagement. Let's assume that this is an ROI calculator used to help sell its project management software. Now this particular tool is built in Microsoft Excel. There are eight tabs and it has a web-like interface. You can navigate by clicking on these buttons on the top of the screen. But let's begin with the data tab. The intention of the data tab is to collect current state information. Let's do that now with a fictional example. Let's say we are hoping to sell a software license to Acme Anvils. Let's say that Acme Anvils has 150 project managers. And each costs, say, $80,000, including their compensation and their burden rate. Next, let's assume that, th that they spend 90% of their day engaged in project management tasks. So that's 135 full-time equivalents that we can make more productive. Of that time, let's assume they spend 40% of their time scoping projects, 20% of their time communicating about projects, and 10% of their time tracking projects. The final data points relate to service level agreement compliance. We'll assume that five times a year they fail to make, meet the terms of their SLA, and each time it costs them $25,000. So that's it. You'll note that I don't collect a ton of data, just 10 points or so. Sometimes keeping it simple is best. If I were helping our clients build a custom analysis for a specific sales opportunity, I'd probably make it a bit of a deeper dive. But for this demonstration, let's keep it simple. Now on to benefits. This is the fun part. We are going to quantify or assign financial values to the ways in which our software is financially better than the current state. There are five possible benefits you see represented in the benefit summary. Each benefit is going to have three scenarios representing a range of projected impact, conservative, likely, and optimistic. This is a critical best practice. There's always going to be uncertainty about what the future state looks like. If you're projecting financial impact, it undermines your credibility if you present a single number as if it were a certainty. For that reason, we usually present our numbers as a range. Now let's take a look at the benefit detail. Our practice is to group a qualitative description of the benefit adjacent to the quantitative calculation. In doing so, we can reinforce the logic that using our product will translate into financial impact. We call each of these items a benefit object. You'll note that each benefit has transparent row-by-row -row calculations. There should never be any mystery as to how a benefit is calculated. It's all right there. Let's look at benefit one. This benefit relates to reduced effort in scoping projects thanks to our imaginary software. So this benefit calculates the value of returning that time to project managers. Here's how I calculate benefit one. We determined on the data tab that we have 135 full-time equivalents engaged in project management work overall. They spend 40% of their time engaged in scoping projects. So there are 54 full-time equivalents who do project scoping exclusively. The orange section relates to the improvement levels we expect to see in each scenario relative to the current state. There is a default value in there currently. It's easy to change if you'd like. So we are assuming we can improve productivity by 20% in the likely scenario, which means that we are creating 10.8 full-time employees who have the time to do additional work that's not currently getting done. Next, we will assign a financial value to that work by multiplying the FTE impact by the burden compensation. So we have $864,000 worth of value created in the likely scenario for benefit number one. Please note the annotation section. That's another best practice. For the sake of credibility, if we can cite a data source, we put it right there so there's no mistaking the fact that a number has been vetted. In the interest of time, I won't go through the other four benefits. The approach is going to be similar to the way we calculated the first benefit. Let's move on to phasing. 
Here is where we want to take into account the time it takes to deploy the software and to test and train as necessary. We also want to factor the potential growth of the environment. If the company is growing, the benefits should grow as well. The way I do it is to give the user the choice of applying universal phasing or to do benefit by benefit phasing. If you're building this yourself, it's easy to forget phasing, but we recommend that you don't skip this step. You may undermine your credibility if you present numbers as if the benefits get realized immediately, when typically it is not. So we're getting close. Let's finish building out a five-year cash flow and key financial metrics. On the results tab, the first thing I'm going to do is enter customer-facing costs. The software license cost, let's say, is $600,000. Maintenance is automatically calculated based upon a 20% default rate, and I can adjust that in the Assumptions tab. I could add hardware costs and professional services, if any. So there are my costs. Above, I have my five benefits with phasing and projected financial impact over five years. Now let's summarize the net financial impact with key financial metrics. Net present value is the net cash flow taking into account the time value of money, or how much the investment is worth in today's dollars. Return on investment is net benefits, or total benefits minus total costs, all divided by total costs. Finally, payback period is the approximate period of time that it takes for the accumulated benefits to permanently overwhelm the accumulated costs. It's when the purchase goes from red to black and becomes profitable. By the way, a really effective way to improve the financial metrics is to apply extended payments. TFP can also help arrange extended payment terms with lenders to help make our client solutions more affordable. Note that we're looking at likely scenario numbers. We can also show the other scenarios, and the, and the output will dynamically update. No matter which scenario we show, in the end, we want to show a really clear view, one that doesn't require a lot of financial knowledge. The customer can quickly see what the projected financial impact will be, which makes it easy for the decision makers to make an informed choice and hopefully make the purchase. Now we at TFP like looking at numbers, we're funny that way. Pictures may work better for the customer, so we always include several charts. This middle chart is my favorite. The purple area represents cumulative benefits over five years across all three scenarios in one view. The red line is costs. It's nice how, in this case, the benefits overwhelm the costs. It tells us that this investment is looking promising. We have some other charts as well, all designed to make it easy to see the projected financial impact at a glance. I'm going to skip past the Assumptions tab. That's where we can fine-tune the model's default values and go to the Backup tab. Now, if there is additional material to support the claims that we're making, any benchmarks, white papers, or testimonials, here is a nice place to put them so they are easy to access in any conversation. Again, anything we can do to enhance credibility is likely to be worth the effort. So in conclusion, I hope you found this session helpful and are ready to build an ROI calculator either to help you sell or to help evaluate your own potential investments. We've gone over lots of best practices that we hope you'll follow. But if you need some help, we're here for you. Give us a call or email us at info at tfpllc.com. We'd be happy to discuss what we can do to help make calculating ROI in particular, or value selling in general, a strength of your organization. This is Alex Corman for Technology Finance Partners. Thanks for listening.